frontier is defined as uncharted territory by land or notion. Those who chart that territory tell a story. The past illustrates the blueprint for the present. How things are and how they've evolved. From land to water, we are challenged to border that new frontier. A frontier the outdoorsman knows like no other. Author Gary Lewis works his way along that edge of where discoveries, failures, and achievements have written the story of the sportsman. Yes! Yes! From state to state, continent to continent, the stories told create the foundation of the present and they lay the framework for the future. Through the muzzle fire and on the stone are stories from the edge. Water is the most important thing as far as Indians are concerned, because that's, that's life. The past is written, the present is here, and this is Frontier Unlimited. Helicopters are such a big part of New Zealand's um, environment, I guess, because we just need them. If you look at Alaska, a lot of people up there have um, bush planes, you know, all sorts of planes on, flo uh, on floats or they've got big wheels on them, you can land them anywhere, and, and that's just how you get around up there. You know, in New Zealand, that's how we get around down here, is it's in a helicopter. We don't really have places that you can land a plane. I mean, you can land them in the river valleys, but when you want to go to the tops, and um, and that's where a lot of work gets done, is uh, you need a helicopter. So they're, they're a massive part of, if it wasn't for helicopters, New Zealand, you know, it's public land especially, would be in huge trouble. The loan of a Model 48 is not taken lightly. 1948 was the year John Nosler brought the Nosler partition to market. The year that changed everything in bullet design and how we hunt big game. Lewis knew John Nosler, and when he holds one of those rifles, he thinks of his friend and how his memory goes with him into the mountains. Lewis tends to subscribe to a heavier bullet approach, to a little trepidation when Mason at Nosler said he'd send him with a 55 grain E-tip, 55 grains. That sounded like a bullet for a rock chuck, a bullet for a coyote, though Lewis knows the E-tip and he knew what he must do. With this small caliber, he plans to keep shots under 300 yards. New Zealand. Geologists tell us it's the new land mass to rise up out of the ocean, and it's easy to believe. Instead of rounded off tops, New Zealand's mountains are as sharp as knives, and every rock a hunter bumps his shins into leaves a mark. We're up in Hass Pass this morning. It's another beautiful day in New Zealand. I've got a bit of cloud cover and a bit of rain. Right now we've uh, spotted a couple chamois on the way up. We're just gonna have a little bit of luck and maybe the clouds will clear and we'll get another opportunity to, to put our eyes on them. We've got just a, this fog laying on top of the mountain right here. All we can do is look in the places where we've seen chamois before and look in those types of places and just try to see what we can see because I think this weather is just gonna sit down on us here We've only got a few minutes. We'll make the best of it. Yeah, didn't really go to plan, but. Just with this weather, it wasn't supposed to be here until about lunchtime, so. We got here at daylight, met Ken and got out here for a look, but it's, um, yeah, coming in on us quite quickly, so we're gonna shoot on the hill and get out of here. Seats. 
We're going up in the air and up on the mountain. Going after chamois, and that failing will go for tar. Try and put some scratches on this rifle today. <laughs> Really nice looking wood. <laughs> These rifles are stocked with some of the finest wood grain on rifles today, and Lewis had to take care of it. For that reason, he carried a Grays Harbor under sleeve with it to protect the wood and stock as it slid in and out of the helicopter, in and out of the trucks on hunts for stag and fallow deer. They, uh, they're we are very, very lucky in a way. I think New Zealand's probably one of the only countries in the world where you're allowed to heli hunt uh, as such. Um, but it still has its part, you know, like a lot of people, and I can see I can see how people don't understand. People probably struggle to wrap their minds around it. Hey, I'll put you up on the snob here, Bob. And, uh, yeah. Here it's a bit different. We need them. The, the numbers need to be managed. Um, and we just require helicopters to do that, to get up there and um, get into where they live. Right. I'll get some of the best glass in the world out on them and we'll have a close look. Shammy that we've seen there <coughs> looks like two young animals, a young buck and a young chamois. The one at the back, he's got slightly bigger uh, horns on him and they hook back a bit more. He's only a young animal, but he's still, he'd still be considered a trophy. He's over sort of eight, eight and a half inches. But um, he's well away from being a full on mature a buck. So uh, good to see, especially so early in the day. But I think we'll just sit tight, keep glassing for a bit. We've seen some other animals around, so we'll just see what pops up out of the woodwork. I saw a big black one out yeah. the right side of the helicopter as we were coming up this way. the ridge? Yeah, with five nannies. Right. It quite often happens when we come in and get dropped off in the hills like this. It racks all the animals up a wee bit, and it sort of spooks them a wee bit. If you sit tight, stay out of sight, um, that quite often they'll just, they're really in inquisitive, so they're going to slowly just pop up and start looking around, wondering what was going on. If we stay low, we're in a really good spot. We've got both sides of the ridge and this whole valley to hunt all day, so... Um, I think if we pop around the corner and see what pops its head out, I think we should be in some in some luck. So, this is the hardest hunting in the world, alpine hunting, and what you're doing is you're hunting for sheep or goats when you're up in this kind of country. Sheep, goats, or these little antelope of the high mountains. We're in the Southern Alps in New Zealand, and this is rugged country. Just to walk here would take three days to get to this spot and we're dropped off on this mountain for, what, three hours, maybe all day. It's really rare to get these kind of experiences. You do this when you can, because when you're older, you can't get to these places. I've been looking forward to this my whole life.
close enough to make a shot within about 200 yards. This rifle here, it's a 22 nozzler. It's a new caliber, very fast, very flat shooting. And I'm using a non-lead bullet, non-toxic, 57 grain E-dip from Nosler. It's accurate. I'm gonna hold on the shoulder, try to make a real precision shot with this thing. Lewis, Pog, and Daniel Cameron are in search of chamois in the southern Alps of New Zealand. Pog spotted the chamois down slope of their position and made an attempt to get a shot.
Daniel Cameron split off from the group to cover more ground on the steep slopes. There's a shimmy just in this gallery just over here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's a lot like this actually in the face. Mm -hmm. and it's just grazing around. Okay. And a really good ledge that you can sit on and look straight at it, 150 yards okay. shot. Okay. So it'd be a nice easy shot. Um, it's really hard to tell how big it is with these binoculars, mm -hmm. but it's not tiny. Mm -hmm. um, so if you, if you want to go have a look, mm -hmm. Maybe we could suss it out. We could put the scope on. Anyway. Mm -hmm. Go over and have a close look. Put the scope on and see. Yeah, I think Daniel reckons it's above the ears. So if it is above the ears like that, it's mm -hmm. definitely worth taking. So yeah, yeah, it's not tiny. With the horns of the chamois just higher than his ears, Lewis made the decision to take this chamois. Thanks for helping no, me problem. pick it up. I, di I didn't have any landmarks after I got out of the scope. Right, yeah, yeah, that's a good. Well done. Result. <laughs> hey. <laughs> well done. Thanks. Perfect. You think we can land a chopper on that little bluff? Yeah, maybe we can do that. Nice, Gary. Good spotting, Dan. All right, mate. Thanks, Dan. No worries. Good work. Kiwi CrossFit, that's what I call it. <laughs> One of the first rules in mountain hunting is don't lose elevation. Yeah. You know, but the second rule of mountain hunting is you're going to lose elevation. So we went all the way down there only to bump that thing and send it over the, over the hill. And, you know, that's just what the mountain gives you. And... Then, I, you know, we got to battle all this way back up here and you can wait for 25 years to draw a sheep tag in our country yeah. or you can just go hunting in New Zealand Exactly. and you get the same kind of mountain experience and you can do this year after year where back home, you know, we got a we got one shot maybe in a lifetime to draw a hunt like this. But man, do it while you're young. As brothers, Pog and Dan played a friendly competition of get to the animal first. Man, he got down there fast. Look at that hook right back. Yeah, that's what I saw from the scope. Yeah. A lot of West Coast shimmy now getting, um, because it's so wet, wet. Uh -huh. They get horn rot. Uh -huh. So it's quite often you see them with no horns or one horn, mm -hmm. and it's not in very good condition. Mm -hmm. Whereas he's actually in tip top nick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's thick in the bases, and he's got real nice shape to him. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. big hooks are what you want. Yep, yep. Looks like he's longer on that side than this, this side, maybe. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I've been standing shape for for <laughs> two and a half years. Fantastic. Chamois shape. Quick. Thanks for spotting it. Great yeah. shooting, great shooting. <laughs> 